The first major shift in leadership theory in its long journey away from the great man theories was collectively known as the influence era. The influence era acknowledged that leadership involves a dynamic between the leader and the follower. This dynamic moves away from associating leadership with a set of personality traits and rather emphasises how the active influence of the leader over the follower determines their relationship. Early leadership theories of this period focused upon the punitive or coercive power often embedded in the positional authority of the leader, and later theories of this era looked more towards the persuasive power often embedded in a leader's positive personality. This particular era contributed towards recognising the division between positional power and personal power, the difference being that the leader could resort to threat, implied or direct, or persuasion in achieving their goals. Certainly leaders in contemporary working environments who do not consider the wants and needs of followers and who resort to threats or coercion are considered very poor leaders indeed. The next era of leadership theory returned to the great man theories, but only to develop some of the ideas about leader behaviour, namely behaviour patterns. It focused on what leaders actually do. It examined typical leader behaviour patterns and differences between effective and ineffective leaders. The major outcome of these theories was the balance in all leaders between behaviours aimed at concern for the task versus behaviours aimed at concern for the individual satisfaction and group cohesion. At the time, this was considered to be a major advancement in leadership theory. Firstly, because when these ideas were tested by academics such as Fleshman and Harris in 1962, it seemed to produce valid and reliable leadership outcomes. Secondly, because for the first time, managers could be given a set of easily implementable practices which would consistently improve their leadership effectiveness. For example, Blake and Mouton suggested that managers need to be concurrently concerned with considering the needs of their followers while also providing an environment in which followers can operate optimally. To demonstrate this, they developed the managerial grid, which charts the concern for production and the concern for people of a managerial unit. A unit with high concern for people and low concern for production is deemed to be the country club style. At the other end of the scale, with low concern for people but high concern for production, is the produce or perish style. We also have the impoverished style, middle of the road style, and with a high concern for people and production, the ideal, team style. Meanwhile, McGregor divided managers into two categories. Those that believe that followers are passive and need to be constantly directed and externally motivated, Theory X leaders, and those leaders that believe that followers are self-motivating and only require the right conditions in which to produce at their optimum levels, Theory Y leaders. Towards the end of the behavioural era, researchers such as Bass, Asher and Johns realised that leaders cannot and do not directly cause followers to behave in particular ways. Rather, Leaders provide the conditions and motivation for followers to move towards certain ways of behaving. Furthermore, leaders can, by varying the reinforcing behaviours at their disposal, cause followers to react in desirable ways towards the goals the leader is moving the group towards.